my fearless friends. Such a joy to bring you a dear friend, a coach, a mentor, someone who has been inspiring me for quite a while. And you know her, she was here with us last year as well. None other than my friend, Dr. Joyce Wazirali. And before starting to record this wonderful episode, she was just telling me that she received another amazing award that just shows her how much heart and passion and how much life and joy she has put into her work. And this only inspires me to do more but it actually inspires me to be more. And it's such a reminder, as Joyce said, that it's not her. It's something bigger than her. We are all one. And before you wonder, well, how come are we all one? My friend is going to tell you more about this in just a few seconds. Let me tell you a bit about her since she has quite some divine achievements because what Joyce does is not led by the flesh. It's not human-like. It's more of the divine. It's more of the universe. It's more of God talking through her, with her. My amazing friend, Dr. Joyce Wazirali, is a multi-award winning author leader and doctor in entrepreneurship. She has been featuring in Forbes, Times Business Magazine, Who's Who of the World 2022, Global Magazine, Global Woman Magazine, and more, and so much more. Dr. Joyce is the founder, CEO, and author of Unity Conscious Leadership, which is an academy for over 35 years years. She has specialized in entrepreneurship, leadership development, and cultural change. And her mission is to contribute to healthy relationships and societies, absolute happiness and peace with the lens of unity conscious leadership, a new paradigm of leadership to transcend duality, which is the root cause of crisis, conflicts, and polarization, and grow to unity, which is actually dynamic world peace. Mind-blowing, I know, but wait until you hear my amazing guest tell you more about this. Joyce, welcome. What a privilege. Thank you. Thank you for having me, Roxana. And uh, I enjoyed last year, and now I'm looking forward to this interview for this year. It's my pleasure, and you make me so happy, Joyce. I've had an amazing day today, to be honest with you. And as I was getting ready to have our episode, I felt this ecstasy, this very positive energy. And it feels like I am high on life every time I am close to you because I want to tell our listeners that you have guided me through one of the most interesting and different processes that I've ever come to experience. And it brought me so much closer to my family and friends, to the society and to the community I am in. So even before we start our talk, highly recommending you to anyone that wants to transform their reality and their energy into something more powerful than they could have ever imagined. And I would love it if we could start our talk, my dear, and you telling us what inspired you to create Unity Conscious Leadership. What is it all about? Uh, dear Roxana, Unity Conscious Leadership um, evolved while I was writing my book, Unity <laughs> Conscious Leadership. Here, here is the book. And um, uh, I always wanted to write a book about leadership since I was 
little, <laughs> but I didn't know how and um, what. But in 2018, I had a vision. I had a vision about the situation in the future of the world. And I saw multiple crises and people suffering. So um, at that moment, I felt an urge. I had to write a book. And um, suddenly I had less clients and I, I had more time. So I I got the time to write my book. And I was sitting um, at my computer and I thought, where should I begin? <laughs> and then as if someone instruct me and I started to write. And um, it is a beautiful book. I have won, I've received awards for that. I have also received an, uh, a doctor title in entrepreneurship. And um, so um, while I was writing my book, uh, my thoughts went back to when I was a little girl in Suriname, where I was born. Suriname is in, in the Amazon, in South America. And uh, one of the things I loved to do was being at my grandmother's place because she had an orchard. And as a little girl, I, I was always in the orchard looking at the, the plants, the fruits. And um, every time it changed colors and I saw the birds and butterflies and snakes and everything. <laughs> it was like Alice in Wonderland. <laughs> and then suddenly when I was small, I became aware of how everything is connected with each other, interconnected, but also interdependent because the bird needs the flower and the flower needs the bird. So, and uh, uh, everything has is put together for a purpose. So since then I can see patterns in nature, but also between people. That's the first thing. The second is that I'm, I was born in a very big, big uh, family. I'm the seventh of nine. And as one of the youngest, I had opportunity to observe my siblings, my parents, because when the older one want to do something together, I was too young. So uh, I was not allowed. <laughs> it doesn't matter because I took the opportunity to observe and what happened is that um, mostly their behavior was predictable for me because I was observing them and I saw patterns also re repeating in their behavior um, between my siblings, but also between my parents. And what I uh, predicted happened as well. So, um, and the third thing is that I was born in a country with uh, multiple um, people from multiple um, other countries. So there were many cultures, but everyone could be authentic without losing their identity and living in peace with each other. So we had um, respect and compassion towards each other. And that's, that, these are the three things I already um, had in, in my base um, for my life. So that uh, has uh, formed my lens of unity conscious leadership. Um, because it's not only leadership, it is also cultural change. When I was 10, we went to the Netherlands. So, and the rest is, uh, yeah, history. <laughs> so, um, yeah, that, that's my story. So from a young uh, age, I could see patterns. I could see what would happen in the future. And um, yeah, in my book, you can read, I uh, have three basic principles um, to you, how you can use the lens of unity conscious leadership because the others, this is a new paradigm. The old paradigm is dualism. Dualism means people see themselves separate from their environment. So if something happens, they are looking for answers and solutions outside themselves, mostly. 
but in reality, we are all interconnected and that is the coherence of life. So if you uh, use the perspective of the coherence of life, you can see how everything is and everyone is interconnected. And then you can also uh, find new solutions to problems. So the three basic principles are first, we are all interconnected interdependent and influencing each other continuously. It doesn't matter where you live. So if something happens here, it has an effect somewhere else as well. And sometimes it takes time. Uh, for example, yeah, the, the war in Ukraine, it's very terrible, but the whole world uh, it has an effect on that. So um, it's affecting all of us, the whole world. So um, it's important to know that everything we do or think, <laughs> uh, we affect um, the rest without being aware of, or is it mis may maybe not visible for you, but it is really happening. And that is from the quantum uh, physics. Um, so the second is that our... Um, Outer world is a reflection of our inner world. So if you look to your environment as a mirror for yourself, and maybe you are experiencing beautiful things, then if you look into yourself, then the beauty is also in you. But if you experience um, yeah, bad things in life, then it's good to use them to investigate what you are carrying in yourself. And then um, if, if you do it from the perspective of unity conscious leadership, then you will find patterns in your life. And these patterns are an outcome of something, a traumatic experience in your own life in the past, or maybe you have inherited from your ancestors which is uh, creating the, uh, the new world for you only with the purpose to discover this traumatic experience, solve it. And in the trauma, there is potential, locked potential. If you solve the trauma, the potential get unlocked and you have more, um, yeah, you have more power to put steps forward. That's the second one. And the third one is that all answers and solutions are in ourselves. And that is what I told you about finding it in yourself. So uh, these are the three basic principles. It's sometimes it's very hard if you have uh, bad experiences with people or government. But uh, on a deeper level, uh, there is potential. And um, yeah, I have the experience for 35 years now with my clients, so individuals and corporates. And it all comes back to what I just told you. So it is uh, universal. Unity conscious leadership is universal. It's not about one person or a leader or everybody uh, can use it because the other, uh, the Dualism is an illusion <laughs> because life is not dualism. So if we keep uh, believing in the illusion, we create more illusion, more polarization. <laughs> but in reality, life wants to connect or, or it, it will connect. But it depends on uh, how we look uh, to, the, uh, to the world and to our life. That is what we create. So if we look to our environment from the perspective of unity, then we will create uni unity in ourselves and in our environment. Wow, Joyce. This is beautiful. I am loving this amazing journey so much. There's so much to unpack. I have so many questions for you. And I was thinking, you mentioned physical Oh my God, you said something about quantum physics that just got me completely out of my physical body. 
and into this whole world that's, you know, as you said, we think it's physical, right? But it's so much more. We have everything within. And it's like a quote that I saw not too long ago saying that the least interesting part about you is your body. And, you know, I've been thinking about this a lot because dealing with body dysmorphia myself, I used to be so obsessed, Joyce, with how I present myself to the world out there. As you said, physical, just being there to get the answers, to get the solutions. But it's all inside of us. And I'm so grateful that you mentioned these amazing aspects. And I wanted to ask you if you would like to share a bit more about what what's happening in the quantum what's with physic with physics and quantum that we should really take into account when we think that the reality that we see now it's not real it's inside of us mm -hmm. yeah if in the, in the quantum there is no space and there is no time wow that is what we have created. The You're space. right, because we humans, right? We humans are the ones that created the clock, the time, mm -hmm. uh, years, months, days. It makes so much Or borders between countries. Wow. My country, your country. You're not allowed to come here. I need to show you and to <laughs> our uh, viewers because our listeners can see this, but I'm literally getting chills since yes. you began to mention this because it makes so much sense. So this, our fearless friends, is the way that you can start to put an end to your mental struggle and anxiety because you just need to let go of the dualism. As Joyce said, it's not real. It's just an illusion. You know, Joyce, I'm just having some great breakthroughs now. Oh, tell <laughs> Don't me. Don't mind me. You can <laughs> share it. <continue>. Like. <laughs> I'm just very in awe that we all know these. We know these things. And I know that our listeners know this as well, because who created all of the physical things and borders and everything that we see around us. It's us humans, but mm -hmm. it's literally so much more than that because the world that we have within, right, is so much deeper and so much more fulfilling. Once we get to take the surface off, right, once we scratch the ego mm -hmm. and when we go into our hearts. Please continue, my dear, and sorry for... <laughs> No. <laughs> you can ask your next question if you like <laughs> please tell us about the ego please tell us what's fear really yeah um from the perspective of unity conscious leadership um you you can only be in the here and now and in the here and now is the reality uh -huh. And if there is nothing dangerous, why uh, are people fearing for something? So the, the reason why is because they are thinking about the past or the future. So if people have ex negative experiences in the past and they are thinking about doing for in the future, then they get afraid. They feel fear because that is conditions in the time. If we talk about no time, no space, then um, the conditioning is holding us back and holding us in the fear. So if we want to take steps forward and fear is a collective word because fear contains many things. People can be afraid uh, to take the stage or afraid to do what their heart is longing for or um, um, sing or dance or whatever. It's all fear if people don't dare to do that. But it comes from uh, experiences from the past. 
And I have had many clients, thousands of clients, <laughs> that people who are afraid for examples to uh, take the audience or, to, or take them and to stand in front of the audience because um, when they were young and they were in a, at a primary school, someone was bullying or people were laughing at that person and um, making fool of that person. So that person has the talents to uh, stand in front of the audience. But the, the memory of what happened in the childhood holds them back to, to be at their fullest there to perform. This is a, an example how it works. So if you if I work with my clients with uh, uh, their their trauma and the uh, and release the potential, and then they say, "Oh, uh, my voice has changed. I don't feel tension anymore. I feel more open. I'm not afraid anymore." And just in one session, <laughs> a lot change. Yeah. So and uh, yeah. So I can tell more stories about it. I can tell for hours. Yes, please <laughs> tell us because it's amazing how things happen in the blink of an eye when we get to be full aware of the problem that's not even a problem. It was all in our mind. It happened, as you said, when we were children and we mm -hmm. just took on a pattern that it's not really something that we can rely on now in this very moment because we used it as a coping mechanism to protect yeah. ourselves. And it's, yeah. it's a great choice, right? When we understand that our mind is not here to harm us Fear yeah. is not here to harm us, right? It just wants to protect us. And this was the only way that with the resources it had back then in those circumstances when we were children, it's how it could get us to feel safe, but it helped maybe just for a minute or two when we were children back then. But now it's just time to move on, right? And transcend the energy into something yeah. that's really supporting us. Please yes. tell us more more stories. Please do. Okay. I can tell another story about, uh, uh, yeah, she was in her 50s when she came to me. And she had children and grandchildren. And for some reason, um, she was afraid to follow her heart. So she was always precautious when she met her uh, children and grandchildren because she was afraid uh, that they wouldn't uh, like to connect with her anymore. And then I worked with her and what, what we um, found out was that when she was a little girl, her father left the family. And then for two years, she went to not, uh, the, her mother put her and her brothers and sisters in a in um how do you call it orphanage. outside yes yes orphanage house and then after a few years a family adopted her so it all started in when she was a little girl that she was not accepted and it was a pattern in her life also at school that the children didn't like her but it was something in her, her pain. And maybe she was thinking um, that she was already afraid that people wouldn't like her. So people behave in a certain way if they think about that. And then uh, you pu they push people away from their environments. It's the other way around. But when you are small, you don't understand why people don't accept you and no children don't want to play with you. Um, but that was a very uh, crucial um, event in her life um, without her father, mother. And um, we worked on that. And since then, she is not afraid anymore that people don't want to connect with her or her family will leave her because that was the old trauma and so we are all carrying traumas not only from our own life but 
also from inherited from our ancestors. So, yeah, it goes uh, for generations uh, back uh, in the past and for uh, centuries. And so the whole world is built with people <laughs> who are carrying a lot of history with them. And when people meet each other, then they uh, project their history onto each other. So sometimes um, I, I have the experience with my clients. One of the things that is worldwide a, a very important issue is uh, discrimination. Um, but that is mostly something we carry in ourselves. Uh, the trauma of being discriminated, we carry in ourselves. And uh, that attracts people that are do still doing it without knowing. And th the other one is projecting as well. So it is like we are looking at each other through the eyes of our ancestors. It's not clearly our own eyes without history. It's conditions. And if we use the lens of unity conscious leadership, we start to um, solve it in ourselves. And what happens, our awareness about how everything is interconnected grows and how we create our life grows or environment, how we create our environment grows. And then we can um, consciously create peace and healthy relationships and healthy societies because we are looking for a different way of finding solutions to problems of today. For example, um, AI is very uh, modern now. Eh? Everyone wants to use AI. If you look at the computer programming, um, if before AI, it was uh, the programming of the software is one or zero. And that is, you can compare it with um, the um, dualism. Dualism is me or my environment, or, huh? so only those. Um, with AI, they um, use more combinations of one and zero. So it is one or zero, one and zero, and many combinations of one and zero. And this you can compare with unity conscious leadership, because if you look at the world in this way, you see many opportunities that were not there when uh, we use the old computer, <laughs> the old programming. So we are all programmed on a old fashioned way and we should reprogram like AI's thinking. That is the new way of looking at, at yourself, your environment and life. And that will bring a big change in, in the world. You said something extremely interesting. Well, everything that you said is truly mesmerizing me. And it feels like you are speaking directly to me. But I have a feeling and I'm going to kindly ask our listeners and viewers of this episode to let me know, to let us know, our fearless friends, do you feel that Joyce is also talking directly to you? Do you feel that we are all one? Now that Joyce has explained the basis of this very beautiful theory. And I wanted to ask you, Joyce, a personal curiosity that we have not spoken about yet. And I am not going to be upset if you don't answer this, but since you are so connected, to everything and everyone, and you see how everything comes together. Can you please let us know, how do you think that AI is going to evolve? Yeah, uh, that's uh, how I think. AI is going to evolve in a way of uh, dualism. <laughs> because the person who is behind the AI is a peep, uh, is a human being. <laughs> and if they look through the window of dualism, <laughs> it can, you can call it AI, but it will 
also polarize people. The polarization doesn't stop with AI. It will help to make things easier for people, but there is also good and bad with AI already. Wow, thank you for sharing this. <laughs> and it just makes so much sense because AI is just maybe an extension of the human consciousness. And yeah. I wanted to ask you, my dear, what would be your advice for a young leader, someone that's an entrepreneur at the beginning of their journey? How do we keep present? Um, I have three things. The first is use your environment as your mirror. So keep on um, using your environment for the second thing, your personal development. So if, uh, if you uh, um, want to change your environment, work on your personal development and um, go to someone who can help you with that, a coach or trainer, or you can connect with me as well. So, and a third is when you um, meet people, even if you met that person yesterday, meet each other with compassion and respect because what i have learned from all these years with my clients uh, about their history they are, they are carrying with them the only way to really connect from heart to heart is from compassion and respect towards each other because you never know why someone is acting some way you you can't, you don't know what the driver of the behavior is, unless you meet that person from heart to heart. Beautiful answer, and you are so right. We never know what's happening behind the scenes, right? We can mm -hmm. just guess, we imagine, and this is where the ego shows off, saying that, you're to blame. That person hurt me. He did this to me. She told me that. But it's just all a mirror. It's that self-concept, right, Joyce? How you yeah. see yourself. Yeah. Would you say that there's maybe a technique or maybe a question that someone could maybe start thinking about when dealing with self-concept? What do you think? Yes. If they uh, see their environment as their mirror, then they can ask themselves while, while this was happening, what was I thinking? What were my actions? And what was I doing? Uh, what, what, what was I believing in? And mostly people say, yeah, I already expected this or that because they expected it. It happens. <laughs> it's the other way around. <laughs> so I still would say, try of dry just do it think the, if you have an, a critical voice think the opposite before you meet someone so if someone uh, if someone has an appointment with someone else and the person is very critical about the other person then think about the positive things about that person you're going to going to meet and then um the connection will be different this is very simple. Just observe what you are thinking and what you are doing. Observe yourself and you will get a lot of insights about yourself. And then you can change. And sometimes it's difficult to change yourself. You need some help from someone who is um, yeah, um, a coach or a consultant. So, yeah. Thank you so much for mentioning this. These questions are life-saving and I too use them with my clients to help them get rid of fear and stress because it's all within. And I advise that our listeners and viewers get in touch with my amazing friend, Joyce, because I have experienced my fearless friends first class coaching and mentoring and support. 
this beautiful woman and if you are not watching us on youtube come and see how beautiful my guest is she has this natural <laughs> curly hair all pampered up <laughs> looking amazing like a doll today and i so miss her i as we were talking before starting this yeah. episode i so missed you i miss you as well <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> a talk with Joyce. See how she can support you further because you need some guidance that goes beyond the flesh. As I said earlier, there's something really special about Joyce, something that gets you to remember your ancestors, as Joyce said. And I have this curiosity, Joyce, and I think you maybe told me about this when we had our session last year. However, when we heal ourselves, we basically heal the entire generation of ancestors, right? Yes, if we do it on soul level. Yeah. Yes. Wow. Yeah. If you do it on soul level, then you heal uh, the generations, uh, before you but also uh, for your children and grandchildren etc so you break a pattern in the in the family system yeah and you helped me break the pattern in my family and it was a pattern of fear of express of, of expressing my emotions towards my parents and it was that really strong hesitation of letting my father be the lead of the family. Somehow something happened in my childhood and my mind translated things that I need to be in charge. Maybe I was put in front of uh, making some choices when I was very small. But what you said back then and how you guided me through navigate through these feelings have really given me such a whole fresh approach on family and the dynamics of it all. So I'm so grateful. And that's why I am just raving about you now so that people can get to see your amazing content and can you please tell us where we can get your book? Because I'm sure that everyone will want to read this amazing work of art. Yes, you can order online at Amazon, but there are more online shops uh, worldwide. Um, you, can, you can order there. And I have good news because uh, I live in the Netherlands and people ask me, please translate your book in Dutch. So that's what I did. So last Friday it was finished and uh, in the mid of August um, it will be available in the Netherlands and all over the world online and also in the shops in the Netherlands and in Belgium, so bookshops. So uh, yeah, so if people want to order they are welcome to send me an email and then uh, yeah, I will send it to them or they can order at the online shops or in the shops as well. So, um, yeah. That's wonderful. Thank you, Joyce, for mentioning that. And, you know, I don't speak Dutch, but I see how this is going to create such a ripple effect in the Netherlands because it's such a, I, I've been there and I enjoy it so much. I see it su at such a touristic place, so many people from all over the world and you are having such a great reach there. And it just makes me very excited to know that more people are going to tap into themselves. This is yeah. basically long story short. So if you don't like what's happening outside of you, go back inside and yeah. see what's really <laughs> holding you back see what are the limitations yeah the limiting beliefs that you have about you and can you please tell us my dear how can everyone can get in touch with you where can they see your amazing content and what can we expect next from you yeah i have a website so you can go to my website uh, 
www.unityconsciousleadership.com. In the Netherlands is www.eenheidsbewustleiderschap.nl. And I'm on social media. I have my, uh, my YouTube channel. Uh, I offer a, also a small meditation for two minutes. And you can do it every day. So it's for free. Go to my YouTube channel. You will find more interesting information. And uh, yeah, I'm on Instagram, um, Facebook, LinkedIn. And I always post uh, on uh, LinkedIn, Facebook and Instagram. So you can follow me and uh, I can keep you informed about uh, the changes. Um, yeah, I offer uh, leadership courses since 2020 and it's going very well. It's in Dutch and English. Uh, you can follow online or live. So it doesn't matter where you live, but if you would like to learn how to put the, the lens of unity conscious leadership, I have a year program and it is really blowing your mind <laughs> and your environment because if you are living in unity consciousness, then you don't have to put goals. I, I want to achieve this or that, but only thinking about is enough. And for some reason, um, the your future is emerging towards you. Instead of stepping into the future, the future comes to you. That is how I live because I live from day to day. And sometimes I have plans yeah, I'm going to receive an award in September, so I had to have to prepare to buy a ticket, etc. But then I let it go, and then things comes to me. So <laughs> that's the way it works. You mentioned something very interesting that I know that many young people are into. So. Many of my friends, many entrepreneur friends of mine, we are all into, you know, the law of assumption, the law of attraction, which is very interesting. But in my opinion, and I think that you can also agree, we just don't know how to let go. And you said something that I so much enjoy. How does letting go go through the lens of unity conscious leadership? Um, it, it's the law of creation. <laughs> so yeah, it's the law of creation. If you if you um, learn how to look at the world this way, then you can see how you create your own world, but you can help other people because you can see how other people create their own world as well. So it's not only for yourself, but it's also for your environments. So if you follow a course, it's for many people. <laughs> one person pays, but the other one, <laughs> it's like, um, it's contagious. People ask, oh, how did you change that way? And then they get conversation uh, about uh, that. So, yeah, and I, I do guiding. I, I guide for in one session, uh, I break patterns. Um, I do a lot, so... Uh, just look on my website, <laughs> there you can find the information. And if you need more information, just send me an email and we can have a Zoom talk or uh, have conversation by telephone. So everything is possible. That's wonderful, my dear. Thank you for mentioning this and letting know our fearless friends watching and listening that I'm going to have all of Joyce's links and details in the description of the Spotify version on YouTube as well, because I only bring on people that really sparked something in me, people that have truly inspired me. And that's why my fearless friends, I would love it if you could connect with Joyce and see how she can inspire you as well, because I know I have been inspired beyond and above my dear it has been an honor and a great privilege having you here again with us and i look forward to having you the third and the fourth and the fifth time within the coming years thank you so much for being here with us 
You're welcome, Roxana, and thank you for having me. It was a pleasure talking with you. Thanks for this interview. Thank you as well.